morning and welcome to St. Matthew the Apostle on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to all who are present in the sanctuary and all those who are joining us virtually. Can you hear me? The service continues with the opening acclamation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be the kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, excuse me. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams, 
for they tell one another just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell that dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge? The second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And now what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouth of lions, quenched raging fires, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put fire, foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, re refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, 
so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Christ. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized. What dress am I under until it is completed? Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather a division. From now on, fire in one household, five in one household with, will be divided, three against two, and two against three, they will be divided. Father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. With all the divisiveness present in society these days, it seems like the last 
thing we need is a gospel text that seemingly encourages more division. Look at what has been happening in our country this past week with calls for a civil war and an attempted attack on an FBI office. Even in our own church, bishops in the worldwide Anglican Communion just recently ended their decennial Lambeth Conference. Part of the conference was taken up with discussions over human sexuality. One camp insisting that the church's traditional teachings are cast in stone, while others maintain that the word of God responds to an evolving society. The differences were not resolved, as I believe they never will. Neither camp has a monopoly on truth. We just need to trust that God is at work in our midst. For a gospel that starts with an angel's promise of peace on earth, our lesson seems out of place. And yet, the specter of division is present in Luke's gospel from the beginning. You will remember Mary's Magnificat, where she prophesies that He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. At Jesus' presentation in the temple as a boy, a holy man named Simeon warned Mary that the child was a sign that would pierce the soul. It may be that the piercing would not refer to her pain at her son's death, or at least not solely. The gospel tells us that Jesus rebuffed Mary and his brothers, declaring that his family are only those who hear the word of God and do it. Yes, Jesus' own family was pierced by division. Those who followed Jesus also knew the cost. They were regularly thrust into conflict, even with their own family. To follow Jesus meant adopting, adapting, a, adopting a new way of living. It meant accepting as the Messiah, an itinerant preacher who befriended the disreputable and the sinners and preached a message of love and forgiveness, a message that was bound to be divisive, it still is. Last Sunday, we had a baptism here. It was joyful, as a baptism always is. The little boy, just a few months old, was so cooperative, especially when I poured the water of baptism not only over his head, but over his face. And he didn't complain at all. But baptism is more than a joyful occasion. Baptism signifies a change, a transition, that in its fullness will help us look at the world from God's perspective. That may explain Jesus' talk about fire today as a kind of baptism. Across the Old Testament, fire was seen as a purifying element that burned away impure religious practices, impure in that they tended to make religion a source of false comfort. To this day, little may have changed. Think of the popular Christian obsession with accepting Jesus in your heart as the means to escape eternal punishment and guarantee eternal reward, regardless of how one comports oneself. What if, as Jesus seems to suggest, religion and faith are not about guaranteeing future bliss, but rather present us with an invitation to live differently now, 
to see those around us neither as souls to be saved or threats to be deterred, but rather to see them, to see everybody as God's children to be loved, honored, and cared for. How does all this translate into our own lives? You know, in our own day, the division that Jesus says he brings may not be the same thing as being divided as factions over issues of power or or wealth or over religion or politics, as it was with his earliest followers. Today, our call may be to look within ourselves to our reaction to the divisions to which he points. For example, how do we respond to injustice in our midst? What is it we do about oppression and exploitation? Just the other day, as I was driving, I was listening, as I usually do, to a program on the radio. They are always remarkably interesting, but some are also unsettling, like the one the other day. It was about a report that came out in the spring detailing concerted efforts that companies in the meat packing industry took in the early times of the pandemic to, to quash any attempt to shield and protect their workers from the virus. Efforts that unfortunately proved successful, leading to a significantly larger number of lost lives and families scattered in that industry alone. If we think about who the meatpacking workers are, we perhaps can hear echoes of Mary's with its dreams of lifting up the lowly, the division of which Jesus speaks today. And so what responsibility do we have for combating greed in our society? Do we, each of us, accept any responsibility? We need help, God's help, in perceiving the world from the perspective of the suffering, the powerless, and the sinned against, who in their silence of their hearts may pray, thy kingdom come with a deeper kind of longing. I came to bring fire to the earth, Jesus said. We need to listen to these words. In our day, this image of fire can bring to mind the catastrophic wildfire, wildfires out west. But I understand that wildfires can also help regenerate, regenerate a forest, leading to new life, creating conditions for habitat diversity and helping plants adapt to novel climates. As with wildfires, the fire that Jesus describes is costly, but it serves the purpose of life and love. And yet it is not like the fire of a hearth to give us. In her poem, What I Have Learned So Far, the poet Mary Oliver minces no words, describing Jesus' fire as the gospel of light. He says, in part, Can one be passionate about the just, the ideal, the sublime, and the holy, and yet commit to no labor in its cause? I don't think so. The gospel of light is the crossroads of indolence or action. Be ignited or be gone. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayers of the people is form one with all our heart and with all our mind let us pray to the lord saying lord have mercy for the peace of the world for the welfare of the holy church of god for the unity of all peoples let us pray to the lord lord, lord have mercy for michael our presiding bishop peter our bishop Mother Busto, our pastor, and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, for the leaders of the nations, and for all authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given, given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick and healing, we include Betty, Cheryl, Tim, James, Candace, Christina, Donald, Sandra, Tom, Luz, Gabriel, Desmond, Nova, Dee, Michael, and any others that you have to name? Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for your prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, 
violence, oppression, and degradation. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may live our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Be, O Lord, our God. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. The multitude of your mercy look with compassion all who pray you for him. For you are gracious, O lover of God. And to you we give Give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Will you please stand? Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. The Lord is near. Please be seated. I remember when the peace was like a, a mini coffee hour. We'll get there someday. Good to see you all here today. Please join us for a festive lunch after the service in, in, par in the parish hall. Sunday school, I believe, will uh, restart on September 11th. And uh, we are still in need of replenishing uh, the food pantry with canned vegetables and uh, pasta and, and sauce and um, maybe canned tuna. So if you think of it, please, please do, um, do bring some whenever, whenever you can. The birthdays today are Isabella Fernandez. Is there anybody else here who is celebrating a, a birthday or an anniversary? today or this week? Well, I will say for myself, today is the 30th anniversary of my wedding to my husband, <laughs> who's not here. <laughs> so let us jointly say the uh, birthday and anniversary blessing. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we have the blessing of the backpacks and students and teachers and administrators. So anybody who is a student of any age, um, 
or he's a teacher. Go on. Beverly, I think you're a teacher, aren't you? Okay, come on over. Bonnie Montesino. Anybody else who is a teacher or administrator? Oh, art. Yeah. Okay. Barry Lynn. Yeah. All right. Bring them over. Okay. Very nice, very nice. Can somebody take a picture? Like come around and hey. Hi Riley, how are you doing? Hi. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Anybody else left uh, who's, okay, all right. 60th year of Alexander School, very good. Okay, let us pray. God of wisdom, we give thanks for schools and classrooms and for the teachers and students that fill them. We give thanks for this new beginning, for new books, for new ideas, for new challenges. We give thanks for back backpacks and for pen and pencils and laptops and for blank pages waiting to be filled with learning. We give thanks for allowing us to fail and get back up. Help us to remember that asking questions is as important as giving answers. In this beginning of the school year, we pause to give you thanks for all the children and youth and young adults, and we ask you to give them the gift and blessing of curiosity, understanding, and respect. We ask your blessing on these backpacks. May they be a symbol for them that they have all they need to learn and grow in this year in school. We ask also your blessing on the teachers and administrators in our schools and Sunday schools. May they be sustained by your blessing. May each of them, students and teachers, always be guided by your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who, when he was a child in the temple, showed us how much he yearned to learn about you. And as an adult, taught with stories and examples the great love he has for us. So congratulations, students and teachers and administration, administrators, on a new challenging year. Amen. And, and we have Terry Lynn, who's leaving very soon for, Bo for Boston. So that, let us... Let us uh, Keep her in our prayers always for her to know that she is lifted up by her community back here in South Miami. We will miss you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, 
the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love today and always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.